Every year, millions of visitors from all around the world come to Savannah, Georgia. They stroll the city's historic squares, enjoying the generous tree canopy draped with Spanish moss, and soak up the architectural ambiance of hundreds of beautifully restored historic buildings. But Savannah hasn't always been the polished jewel tourists see today. In the 1950s, when I was growing up, downtown Savannah was fascinating, but it was seedy. People come to Savannah, the visitors come, and I think we've always looked this way, we've always looked this good. And in the 60s, the buildings were just run down, they weren't painted, they were broken window panes. I mean, it was um, totally different. Savannah's historic downtown core came under tremendous pressure in the years immediately after World War II. It had become very profitable for developers to bulldoze old buildings, put parking lots in their place, and sell the bricks to be used in new suburban homes. To make matters worse, city leaders saw no value in historic buildings and instead sought to make Savannah look like other New South cities with shopping centers and new bank buildings rising from the rubble of the past. The business community felt that um, tearing things down and putting parking, parking would be the answer to downtown. People would come back. I went through a panic when I sudden, when, when the people, the business community was saying, let's look like Jacksonville, a modern progressive city. Let's get rid of all these buildings. I thought, oh help, we gotta do something. The loss of those things, one by one, um, represented a loss of community and sense of place that Savannah had. It, it, we were trading in our uniqueness for um, everywhere USA, one building at a time. The straw that broke the camel's back was the destruction of this building, the Old City Market, which had stood in Ellis Square since the late 1800s. City officials allowed the market to be torn down in 1954 to build a parking garage. Preservation-minded Savannians vowed that nothing like this would ever happen again if they could help stop it. The inevitable showdown came the next year when a downtown funeral parlor announced plans to purchase the circa 1820 Isaiah Davenport House on Columbia Square, with the presumed intention of demolishing it. Local newspaper writer and artist Anna Colquitt Hunter gathered six friends and formed a new nonprofit organization, Historic Savannah Foundation, to make sure this architectural treasure was not lost. The real motion behind all of this was Anna Colquitt Hunter. She was the center. She needed others, but she was the committed one. She rallied many other important Savannians to have a concerted face. Hunter and her compatriots were able to raise the money needed to purchase the mansion. Today, the Isaiah Davenport House operates as a house museum playing host to 35,000 visitors each year and spreading the message of what Historic Savannah Foundation is all about. We hope that people will come out knowing what Historic Savannah Foundation is, how, who founded it, our seven ladies, but also understand um, what quality craftsmanship meant in the 1820s. The Davenport House received national attention in 2005 when the museum was honored with a Preserve America Presidential Award for Private Preservation. President George W. Bush personally presented the award in the Oval Office. Saving the Davenport House in 1955 was a significant success, but HSF had aspirations that went beyond saving one historic structure. They wanted to create a mechanism for saving as many as possible. Historic Savannah Foundation went on the offensive, creating a revolving fund so that they would always have cash on hand to purchase threatened historic buildings whenever the need arose. Rescued buildings were restored and put back on the market, sold to new owners who saw the value of living or working in a historic place. The idea being, we'll make an investment, then sell it, take the proceeds of that original investment, plow it back into the fund and move on to the next building. So the money revolves, the work revolves, um, and that little by little, we make an impact around the city. To date, more than 350 historic homes have been saved by the revolving fund Historic Savannah Foundation started five decades ago. And it all began with Historic Savannah Foundation. 
Seven women who had the courage to stop the demolition of one historic home and start a movement that went on to save a city. I think we have a tremendous debt to the early preservationists in Savannah. Without rescuing the city from imminent demise, we wouldn't have this living laboratory today, this living example of a city that provides a key to what the future can look like. Savannah enjoys an international rep reputation today, and visitors come from all over the world. Had those seven ladies not been so tenacious, no one would come to Savannah. So the, we owe what Savannah is today to those ladies. We have a sense of place here, um, and it's a place that matters. And we can't, we can't lose that, because if we do, then we lose our identity as a community. Um, and then we just become another soulless city. Now it's up to all of us to honor their vision and make sure a sense of balance between history, tourism, and day-to-day -day life is maintained in beautiful, historic Savannah, Georgia.